Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Liam Gooch. I'm with Tessera. And it's my pleasure to spend uh, 15 minutes sharing with you our vision, or the vision that we have for the proliferation of imaging. One slide introduction to our company, because perhaps maybe you haven't heard of us before. We're uh, a publicly traded company headquartered in San Jose. And we've been around for about 20 years. And um, our specialization um, for the first 10 years was in semiconductor packaging. We're the company that invented what's called the chip scale package, which is basically a package that's the same size as the die that it encapsulates. And we invented that in about 1990. And it's been a fundamental invention that has uh, enabled cell phones to be as small as they are because you need to be able to package the semiconductors reliably very, very, in a very, very small format. So our expertise is inventing and developing technology and getting it to the point where it's manufacturable. And in the past, that's been very heavily material science-based. And over the last five years, as I hope this diagram shows you, we've moved the company on into imaging and optics. And the bridge for that was when we understood that the same packaging problem that, can, that is applied to semiconductors in cell phones can be applied to image sensors. Slightly different, though, in that you take a wafer of image sensors and you package it in glass, obviously, so that you can let the light into the top. So we have developed that over the last number of years and have expanded our footprint into imaging to include um, wafer-level optics, as I've marked here, and image enhancement. Wafer-level optics being the capability of being able to put lenses, diffractive optic elements, all manner of optical and manipulation in glass and in polymers on top of semiconductors. And then image enhancement is the capability in software or in gates afterwards to be able to post-treat the image to, to do something that, that you want to achieve. Now, with that said, um, let's, let's move on to talk about where we're going with all of this. Um, the markets that we're most established in have been traditionally the, the digital still camera marketplace. We're in two-thirds of all DSCs, our technology. Um, growing markets for us have included mobile phones, obviously, and that's exciting. And in addition, we see tremendous opportunity in some new categories of devices that are just now inheriting imaging. And those are devices such as televisions. We're going to see cameras in the front of televisions. Web books have already got them to an extent, but why stop with one camera? And gaming machines. We saw some pretty exciting announcements from um, Microsoft on the Natal project just recently. We think that's just getting started. Our vision is that um, image capture becomes ubiquitous. So to date, imaging has really been about art and entertainment, be it in still or be it in video format. And that's been a great marketplace that has got to a billion plus units um, already, as, um, as we just saw in the uh, analyst presentation. But that's all been about human viewable content. And obviously that's going to continue. What's new is going to be machine consumable content. In other words, we think there's a category of devices that are going to be about looking for image information and capturing that data autonomously with intelligence and communication ability built into those, into those devices. We call those devices smart modules, and we think there's an enormous market that's coming for those to the, to the tune of 3 billion units a year. So what's stopping us from being there already? Well, the, the, the imaging is difficult. Optics is difficult. And I often think about it as being analogous to the analog semiconductor marketplace. Nobody learns analog anymore, and yet it's in every system. The same is true of optics. Nobody learns optics anymore, and yet it's in every single image capture system. It's difficult. Once it works, nobody wants to touch it. And what's even more difficult is combining optics together with software, together with RTL or gates, to produce the imaging function that you want. I think the old saying that nobody buys a drill bit, they buy a hole, is very true here. Nobody wants to design all this optics, etc. They want the imaging result that, um, that you're designing the system for in the first place. So with that in mind, we think there's a great opportunity to abstract all of the difficulty in designing imaging systems, starting with the camera module. Um, shrinking pixels have driven smaller image sensors, which have really aggravated the design of things like optics, lenses, focus and zoom. How do you do focus and zoom in a, in a module that's four millimeters thick? 
How do you package that? How do you put in the processing? These are all problems that we think you can solve by first looking at the camera module. What's in a camera module today? Well, this is, this is a very common format that we see in many cell phones. And in there, you can see there's an image sensor die, which is under here. It's set in a carrier, which is perhaps a ceramic or a plastic. There's a lens barrel that's generally plastic with some plastic lenses fitted on top of that. There's a, an image uh, signal processor in there. There's passive components mounted on a flex circuit. And then there's this flexible lead that's only there because you can't solder this down because it's all plastic and it'll melt. So we think you can do a better job than that. And to the right, this is what we think you can do. Um, it's called a wafer-level camera. And it, we think it's the first step in producing these autonomous devices that are able to do imaging much more cheaply and much more effectively than the assembled systems of today. So the benefits of that, obviously, are things like cost reduction and size reduction. We think the applications go everywhere, from the imaging applications we understand today, like DSCs and mobile phones, into these machine-consumable imaging formats. How do you make these wafer-level cameras, and what are they? So here's a, a schema that uh, builds it up step by step. If you can imagine a wafer, like a wafer of semiconductors, but this is of glass. And on that glass wafer, you can put diffractive optic elements, lenses, whatever you want. You make thousands of them all in parallel at one go, just like you do semiconductors. So here is a lens, that, a wafer that's got lots of lenses in. And you make several of these wafers, and then you stack them up together. So sandwich, effectively, and a gross simplification of a very difficult material science problem. And you use traditional semiconductor equipment, like aligners and bonders, to be able to do this, because the semiconductor industry has been doing this for years. So you just take benefit from all of that. You then singulate those so that you have little stacks of lenses that are all in what we call an optical module. At the same time, you take a wafer of image sensors and you encapsulate that in glass because you want to package it to stop dust and et cetera getting inside. You singulate that and you bring the contacts around the back so you can connect to it. And then finally, you bring both elements together. So you bring this, this stack of optics lenses that you've made together with the image sensor that you've packaged all in one device, which is what you see in the middle here. And finally, you put the housing on. And what you get is this. This is a complete camera. This is the ability to have a device that you can connect to directly on the back using this ball grid array connections. This is a device that you can treat like a capacitor, like an IC. You just stick it down on your circuit board, you solder it in with everything else, and you're done. You can make these really cheaply. VGA, you can make these for between a dollar and two dollars. So when you can make cameras in parallel by the thousand like this, when you can make them so cheaply, we believe that this enables a whole new category of imaging applications when, why stop at one camera? Two, four, eight, whatever. whole new level of functionality will be enabled by the software that runs on top of these kind of cameras. So the benefit of this is obviously the cost and size reduction, the fact that you can just solder it directly onto the board, and the fact that you can do this for VGA, you can do it for one megapixel, two megapixel, three megapixel, up and up. I saw um, a demonstration a couple of years ago at Carnegie Mellon of a professor there who was doing, he called it bug cam. And he had a bunch of cockroaches crawling around with the cameras fitted on top. But unfortunately, the cameras weren't very small. He had to use Madagascan cockroaches, which are about this big. So my, view, my vision then was, I hope we get to do better than that. And uh, here's a recent shot that we did of our wafer level cameras here with three levels of, of lenses here on top of an image sensor next to a ladybird. And here are some pictures of the latest uh, three megapixel images that we've taken. These are non-photoshopped. I'm happy to show you prints of them outside if you're, if you're interested to look more. So that's the first, first step, as I hope I've illustrated here. Um, once you've built a camera like that, you can start building other functionality on top of it. So here's the wafer level optics and the packaging that I just talked about. You can add onto the front end what we call optical image enhancement. I'll explain that in a minute and onto the back, embedded image enhancement.